Hey there, Saints fans. Welcome back for another film today where today we're going to be talking about the offensive woes against the Texans and whose fault is it really? Like, who's to blame? Like, who do we tip the cap to in terms of good slash bad? Be very clear. I've already come into this video having watched the game and I believe I see the answer, at least from this one, and I'm going to share it with you. That doesn't preclude what I'm going to say against the other. So you're going to have to watch the video to find out who I think is to blame and you can decide for yourself after watching the tape we're going to see several plays though be warned this will be a little bit faster paced film study but let's go ahead and roll it if you like the film studies go ahead and drop who that down in the comment section down below to support the channel and see more let's go ahead and uh roll the tape all right so i'm gonna let you watch this one i actually am marking this most of the plays we're gonna look at today are from the last drive of the game but i wanted to mark this to kind of talk about two things one how if you do certain things, in this case, attack the middle of the field, good things can happen. And two, how you can still have a bad play design even with a touchdown throw. So this is the big 34-yard touchdown throw to Rashid Jaheed. Let's talk about the design. So the field read is two safeties deep. That is, as y'all should know by now, middle of the field open. That's actually, we want to attack the middle of the field. That's what this tells us. So let's talk about the design. I really don't like some of this design, but we have a deep post route right here. So kind of running off of our screen right there, a little deep post route, which is good. That's attacking the middle of the field, which is what you want to do. Then on the opposite side, it gets kind of really weird. We're going to have double crossing patterns. We're going to run a mesh concept. We have Chris Olave and Michael Thomas literally stacked on top of each other. And then we're going to leak out Alvin Kamara on the outside. So what does this do? It's designed called a mesh concept is basically what New Orleans is doing here. So I'll let it run just a little bit. So I'll pause it right here. So yes, by design, you ran out Taysom Hill to attack the middle of the field. Fine with that. By the way, I like when Pete Carmichael attacks the middle of the field. This is a positive. But look down here at the bottom. This is really weird. Yes, they are literally designed to be on top of each other. I think this is a horrible design. It's working here, technically, because both of them kind of are open the same spot, but you're literally got two guys, same spot by design. You'll actually see this later. But the big key is here is the post route, attacking the middle of the field. There's the in route. Yankee concept, for those unfamiliar, is a deep post and an in route underneath. It forces the safety to choose. If the safety comes down, then you go over the top. If the safety goes up, then you go down below. And that is a great read by Carr and... Bam! Hits it. Now, let's talk about the reverse. I'm going to actually skip ahead real quick. Don't worry. We're going to come back and uh, slow it down. But I want to show you why I talk about things being a bad design. This is a little bit later in the game. That look familiar? That, that stupid double mesh concept look familiar? Yeah. Well, don't worry. The theme of today's video is going to be why don't we focus on the middle of the field for a lot of plays and tendencies. But... Again, there's also a problem with just like really shoddy play design because what does this do? Again, you're going to have this mesh concept. Alvin Kamara comes out and then you're going to have two guys literally running right next to each other, which means that two defenders can defend one player. That's simple as that. Run. All right, Taysom Hill and Chris Olave right next to each other. Alvin Kamara underneath. So you got three guys. There's nothing wrong with this in terms of a mesh concept, but this is a two-person concept that they're running with three people. And then you got two guys right here. That means this one guy can cover this whole route, right? Now, the bigger problem with this, which we're going to get into in a second, is that we aren't attacking the middle of the field. But that's just, mm, this is just at the core. Some of this play design is mind-boggling. All right, so we're going to run and actually take a look at the entire final drive of the New Orleans Saints. Now, what you're going to see here, and I actually tracked this out. I mapped it. What you're going to see is a pretty consistent theme. You're going to have two things happen. One, the New Orleans Saints are not going to attack the middle of the field at all, basically, for the first about eight plays. And I actually went, and the first eight plays, they attack the middle of the field one time. They go three, no middle of the field attacks, one middle of the field, and then four straight, no middle of the field. And then they get into something that's really squirrely. But anyway, let's take a look at this play. First one, what we're going to have is, again, starting off, not going to attack the center of the field. Now, that's kind of okay is we have one deep safety, which is generally middle of the field closed. But that doesn't mean you can't run into it. But when we talk about attacking the middle of the field, we're talking about 10 to 15 yards minimum downfield attacking that center line. So here, you're going to have these dueling corner routes. You got one here with MT. You got one here with Olave. And then because of pressure, you have a boot out, and you're going to just dump it off to the underneath. 
and which I actually don't mind here. Remember, the Saints have two timeouts right now and two and a half minutes on the clock. So this is fine. Get positive yards is not a bad play. And in terms of being the first play of a drive, no really big deal, right? I don't actually have an issue here. A little bit of pressure you worry about, but you got a positive play, and now you move on to the next one. Now the only thing is you want to have variance, right? You want to mix things up, make it a little bit crazy. So what do we have on our next play? So we have a second and six now, and we're going to have an inverted smash. We talked about this kind of before. And inverted smash is, I'll show you, the smash concept, second and six. The smash concept is a hitch route with a corner route that goes over the top of it. So when I say inverted, what they're going to do is the inside guy is still going to run a hitch, and then they're going to run the corner outside of him. It's it's a little bit different, right? Like it's, I don't know if inverted mesh is the proper terminology to call it here, but that's what I'm going to call it, an inverted mesh. So instead of having it run naturally, we're going to run it like this. We actually complained about this in a, a previous video. So in terms of a concept, not necessarily terrible but again you're not messing with the middle of the field even though middle of the field read was wide open not worried about it so you're going for the corner here you can tell the safety is cheating to chris alave because chris alave is chris alave you got two sit routes over here that you know right at the goals and then go to underneath to foster Moreau again i don't have a real issue with this i really don't middle of the field is the read by the way you have two deep that's the middle of the field they look like they're in a quarters alignment you're okay with that, even if they drop down into a robber. So, two plays in the row. We are ignoring certain sections of the field, which is still kind of fine. It's only a problem when it becomes a consistent theme. And that's what we call a tendency. Let's go to our next play. So, we just saw two uh, straight plays of like a smash, a couple hitch routes, and then we're kind of right back to it. We do the same thing. We aren't pushing the field. We're not pushing the middle. Again, middle of the field open, two safeties. Even in a cover two alignment or even in a quarters alignment, they're going to mostly be on the outside of the hashes. So we want to attack in the middle of the field. But what does New Orleans do here? This is a four route concept with a check down to AK. We go sit, sit, little uh, go route here at the bottom that gets rerouted. So Lave takes himself out the play essentially. And then the top route, you have another go route. So again, we're not attacking those hashes. We're not going into the seams. Now, you managed to convert it for a short gain. So cool. A little short gain. We'll take it. Nothing too crazy. Moving on to the next one. Now we're going to change things up finally. We're going to a three by one set here. Wrong marker. Give me just a second. Three by one simply means that we have three wide receivers on one side. So right here. And uh, our one is our tight end on the back side. Now on this one, we have middle of the field as a closed look. There's a safety right off of your screen. And this one will get a little bit different. The only thing is we're attacking middle of the field now with a closed look. Now, pressure forces a boot out, and we have to roll out here. It ends up just kind of being a throwaway to a go route that's completely smothered. So the, the big thing is when I see a lot of these, it's, it's basically we're seeing a lot of like design throws, like one route type of a read. Now, Chris Olave would have been great except for the pressure. So credit to that one, right? Uh, no real issue here. You did finally attack middle field, but you didn't get to get to it because pressure makes your guy boot. And you can see Alave frustrated about right here because he knew he had it, right? He, he was open. That's fine. We finally showed a little bit of variance, but three straight plays. We didn't attack the middle. Now we finally did. And you can tell that Houston kind of felt like it was coming because they switched up the coverages and we ended up having some different looks. And again, predictability is something that we worry about. So let's go ahead and move on to the next play. So now we're going to change it. We're going three by one. Now we go to the left side as our three by one. And what are we going to do? Little same play, basically. We just flip the side. This time we're going to a deep route. It's a go route with Michael Thomas. And I'll be honest, look, I love MT. I'm not throwing him this ball anymore. This is not 2019. And New Orleans gets a little bit lucky because there's pass interference. And I'm not saying it's a bad PI call. It was clear pass interference, but there's not much shot for... Michael Thomas to create the separation needed to make this play. And it's a design shot, by the way. You're not even worried about what's on the back end. When they call this play in, this is a this is going to Michael Thomas play. So you hit your drop, it's a timing, and you put it in a spot. Carr puts it in a good spot. But again, what are we not doing? Not attacking the middle. Well, we have two timeouts, two minutes on the field. We're going after very difficult to make throws. Sideline throws are the most difficult. They're the longest because the trajectory going not only depth, then you have to then add in this right here. So if y'all remember that 
you know, the, those classes you took in high school you never thought you would need, longer to go down here than it is to go straight up the field. More difficult throw, you're playing the man and the sidelines. Thankfully, you get a PI there. So, again, no middle of the field. What do we do on the next play? All right, two by two set, changed up a little bit. Middle of the field, open read, and we did it again. We ignored the middle of the field with two timeouts, first down, and we go down to a little short reception. Again, not terrible, I guess. I mean, you made a positive play, but you're showing the Texans the same thing. So at this point, if you're keeping track, this is now five plays where they do not attack this area of the field. And what are they doing here? Little out routes with little goes right in that kind of like soft zone area. And you go underneath. Eh. I mean, again, you're not really stressing this defense. This defense is happy to do this, right? What this Texans defense is doing is a form of kind of a shell or a prevent. They are willing to give you the underneath. Happy to do it. They are happy to give you these short passes. They want to make you nickel and dime, eat up clock, maybe burn your timeouts, and not give up big yards. They only care about not giving up a touchdown. They don't care if they give up even a field goal range. They're just trying to slow you down. Next one, where are we going now? Next one. All right, so we went three by one, and again, what do we do? Middle of the field is the open look, two deep safeties. Again, we're not attacking the middle of the field. Tendencies, tendencies, tendencies. You got to break your tendencies because it becomes easy to defend you. Look at how they are defending. They've gone short. They're sneaking the linebacker up in that short zone. They're defending this line, and they know that you're going for the first down, and there's no layers to your concept. There's no variance to your play-calling concepts, and they're all smothered and covered. Flag down there at the bottom, you end up getting the first down anyway. But you can't rely on penalties to get your first downs. You can't rely on quarterbacks who are average making great plays. Now, this is back to the one I showed you before that really frustrated me, that really ugly, stupid mesh concept. Again, middle of the field read is open. We want to attack here. We still have not done it. And guess what? We're not doing it this play either. Not attacking the middle of the field. We go underneath and get a short gain that gets basically nothing to Alvin Kamara. And Alvin Kamara frustrated one yard on this little mesh concept. Easy to read. What do we do in the next play? Hi, yi, yi. Here's where it gets even squirrelier. So, pressure. Move it around. What did we not do? Take a guess, chat. Can you guess what the New Orleans Saints didn't do? Two by two set, and we're running curls. We're, we're running short curls everywhere. Four hitches and a dump off pass. When you've still got, here, I'll rewind it so you can see the clock. We still have time on the clock, and you still have your timeouts. One minute, 11 seconds, two timeouts for the New Orleans Saints, and we're going to run little six-yard hitch routes across the line. So when we talk about play calling variants, we're not only talking about attacking certain areas of the field, because I've been harping on this area, but we're also talking about having layered concepts. For example, the sale concept. Sale concept would be deep route, deep in, flat route. So you have one, two, three. You're attacking all three levels at the same time with a sale concept. There's layers to it and variants. So even if you only want to attack one field or half the field, you at least do it in layers, right? You can do triangle reads. You can do layered concepts. Or you can run six-yard hitch routes everywhere and just, you know, nickel and dime your way to the end zone or at least try. Again, this is what the Texans want you to do, right? They want you to do this. So move on to the next play where finally we're going to get a first down critical third and eight here. Ball comes out a little bit squirrely. They get it to Chris Olave. Sadly, Chris Olave does not get out of bounds, which kind of hurts the team, but not too terrible because you still have time on the clock, but you got a first down. So that, that's big, right? You needed the first down. Let's keep it moving. What are we at now? Let this play finish so we can uh, see. And you see just real close to getting out of bounds just doesn't quite. So Dennis Allen calling for them to keep it moving. So this is going to be first and 10. You just got it. You got 44 seconds and one timeout left. And here's where it gets a little weird. So... You just saw me show you, what, nine plays where they didn't attack the middle of the field. So now you're like, hey, they're due, right? Well, you're right, they are due. But look how wild and crazy this gets. I'm just going to play them back to back. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to see if y'all spot it. And if you do, I want y'all to comment in the comment sections if y'all spot it. So get ready, get your comments ready. See if you can spot what I'm about to call out. So this is a three-by-one set to the right. All right, that's number one. Three by one set to the right. Moving up. 
give you another one. All right, here we go. Three by one set to the right. Oh, wow. I feel like I just saw this. Deja vu time. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So three by one set to the right again. All right. What do we got on the next play? What do we got on the next play? I'm, I'm curious. What's the next one look like? Is it any different? Is it like spicy? Is it really cool? Is it fun? Is it amazing? Oh, three by one to the right with, with Taysom Hill on the inside. Oh, oh, well, Michael Thomas is on the left side, but he was just on the left side again. Wait, hold on. That looks familiar. Wait, there's one more though. Yeah, that one didn't work. It's fourth down. What are we going to do this time? Oh, a three by one set to the right. Oh, is that Michael Thomas up top? Oh, wow. I think I've seen that before. Let me rewind this for you and tell you what you should have seen. And if you didn't see it, don't worry. It's this is uh, it's wild and crazy. So <laughs> here's what we got right after the Chris Olave. Here's what the New Orleans Saints are going to do. I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer. The New Orleans Saints in the next four plays are going to stay three by one to the right the entire time. And they're going to call the play four verts three of those times. So you're going to see four verts, four verts. Then they're going to change it, not be four verts, but still the same set. And then final play of the game, four verts. Four plays, three of them the exact same play call. And if you're curious, do I mean four verts like that play from Madden? Yes, I mean four verts like that play from Madden. I have no problem with four verts as a concept. I have a problem when we run it three times out of four final plays. But let's talk about this one now real quick. I've been harping on Pete Carmichael as a problem. This entire video. This one's on Derek Carr. So the first play, they finally do what I want them to do. They attack middle of the field. So here's your markers. Now, you'll notice Chris Olave doesn't really know what's going on here. They're moving fast. Dennis Allen actually mentioned communication being an issue. But four verts, we're going to attack outside the numbers. We're going to attack inside the numbers. We're going to attack the hash and then outside another vertical. So four verts is literally as it sounds. Four verticals. Now, remember, I just harped on Two safeties means what, chat? Middle of the field open. This is where Derek Carr screws up. Right there. He's making a release right now. Chris Olave, by the way, gave up on this route because he didn't know what's going on. So Derek Carr wants to hit him right at back here at the pylon. But the read, middle of the field open on four verts, right there. It's screaming at you. I'm going to Madden pin this thing to freaking death. This is potentially a touchdown. If nothing else, it gets you inside the five. Hit him right here, and he's getting contact. I trust Taysom Hill to have great contact balance and play strength. He either gets in the end zone, or you're down inside the five. You call a timeout. You got 30 seconds for four plays to get four yards. And that's if he got tackled. If it's a touchdown, Saints probably win this game. But if you notice Chris Olave at the bottom of your screen, he kind of dies off on this route. He doesn't know the play call. You can see him being adamant. He doesn't know what's going on. So when they call it, Carr expects him to be in the end zone. Alave is just kind of run a little lazy fade because he doesn't know the play call and ball falls harmlessly out the end zone. But the big miss here, and I'm giving credit where it's due and I'm giving blame where it's due, Derek Carr misses this one. Absolutely. Middle of the field open against this two shell. That's got to go right here. At minimum, you get to the five yard line and call a timeout or you get a touchdown. But it doesn't stop there. Because the problem is still with play calling. Because right now, what do we do? We're going to call four verts again. Now, here's the thing. Houston's not dumb. They saw themselves just leave themselves open. And D'Amico Ryan's like, yo, 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 yo. None more, no more of that middle of the field open stuff. Close it up. They just tried to get us. Well, P. Carmichael thinks this is Madden and the AI is just going to run the same call. So he runs the same call. Four verts. Watch what happens. This time it's covered. So you're going to have Taysom release. They pull the linebacker to carry him up. Safety covers. Right there. Nowhere to go. And then you got pressure all over Carr. So he just basically kind of throws it away to Michael Thomas. Who I will say, by the way, and I'm not trying to hate on Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas getting these one-on-one go routes in the outside. Again, this is not 2019. I think he has no shot at this. DB does a great job to play the boundary. Pushes him towards the sideline. It's not P.I. You're not going to have a great shot making that your play call. Next one up, three by one set to the right. Again, familiar look. We've been doing this pretty consistently now. So what we're going to run this time, slight change. They're going to bring pressure. This is a one-on-one -on -one cover on the outside. Because of pressure, Carr releases it to a spot. And honestly, Rashid Shahid should probably kind of get this one. I do appreciate they made a slight change here. But what they did, I'll pause it. Hits his drop. He sees pressure coming because there's a free blitzer. And he throws it to a spot. You have an out route right here with Alave, and then you have the corner route deep to Rashid Shahid. Shahid never finds it in the lights. 
and it falls right there. But in terms of a spot where you want to throw that ball or this play, it's a great spot. It just, it doesn't connect. And you would hope at some point it does. But pressure, he releases it early to throw with anticipation. So it's kind of a lob, which greatly reduces the likelihood of it being a catch. Or he could have hit Michael Thomas underneath. But the main issue here is play calling variants. And then we're going to go right back over to the next one. This is the final play of the game. Fourth down, 20 seconds left. Still could have gotten a first down. What do we do? We call for verticals. And as you can see, the defense has again adjusted. They know what's coming. They prepare for it. Lock down, lock down, lock down, lock down. Safety guard in the middle of the field. And with pressure coming on Carr, he has to release it early while he's getting hit. Interception. There you go, Saints fans. That's what you had to watch and deal with in terms of Sunday's loss. And I want to really reiterate this. I am not trying to say that Derek Carr is secretly the Saints savior. I've always held the opinion that he's an average quarterback. Here's the thing with average quarterbacks. You need elite play callers to make them very good, and bad play callers make them look worse than they are because that's what an average quarterback is. Average. Good people can be elevated. Bad people will bring you down. That's just kind of how it is. But the play calling here where you have nine plays and eight of them don't do something, tendency, and then your final four plays, you literally call the same play three different times. You're making it easy for defenses to come against you. You're making it easy to game plan against you. And we talk about the red zone woes. You can say, hey, Derek Carr sucked his entire life in the red zone all you want. It doesn't matter if Derek Carr is terrible, if the play calling doesn't even give it an opportunity to have success, right? Like, both things can be true. There's a concept called mutual exclusivity, which means that just because this is true doesn't mean this isn't true. Derek Carr can be average to below average. While this guy can arguably be the worst guy in the NFL in terms of play calling. He's at the bottom, if not the bottom. And that's just my opinion after watching his tapes for 23 games. And to throw up some stats, by the way, I'm not just trying to be a P. Carmichael hater. In the past 23 games, the offense, higher offense, no matter who's quarterback, Jameis Winston, Derek Carr, Andy Dalton, is averaging 1.9 touchdowns per game. They have scored 30 plus points twice in 30 or 23 games, that's 8%. They have failed to score 20 points over 50% of those games, and they've only had scoring on 31% of their drives. At some point, we have to say, this guy's probably the problem, even if that guy's not great. Does that make sense? Is, that, is my point very clear? I think Derek Carr, the better playmaker and a better play caller, would do better. Do I think that he's amazing? No, but I didn't think that going in, and there's this misconception that Derek Carr is this highly paid top quarterback. Remind you, folks, he's the 13th highest paid quarterback in terms of yearly average, and that will become probably about 15 when it gets to next year's offseason. And the New Orleans Saints are only paying him guaranteed money in two years. And the third year has an out that they can just get rid of him without even worry about it. They paid him to be a bridge quarterback, meaning they say, hey, you're good enough to maybe be good, but we're not going to pay you to be great. We're going to see if you can become great, and then we'll try to pay you again in three years. New Orleans knew what they were getting. An average quarterback who can be above average with the right play calling. But you're getting horrible play calling, so he looks even more below average than he normally would. So, if you're the New Orleans Saints, how do you fix this? Well, changing that's not really going to help, right? We can argue Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston's not really going to be any different, especially if the main issue is the guy calling the plays. The only real option is to change play callers. Will you see it this week? Highly unlikely with the Jacksonville Jaguars being a short week and the game being on Thursday. But if you watch this final drive and you watch the game as a whole, what you tend to find is that P. Carmichael calls a really good game, especially early game game planning, and when there's no pressure. When pressure hits, he reverts to bad tendencies, like not attacking the middle of the field, even with two plus minutes and two timeouts. And then he has a really bad problem, apparently, in this game where he has a favorite play, and it's Madden, and he's not leaving that play until he commits to it. And I'll admit... When I play Madden, four verts is amazing. I'm going to hit the middle of the field with my tight end, or I'm going to go underneath to my running back, Alvin Kamara, and get bonus yards. But you don't call it in a real NFL game three times in four plays. You're just not putting your playmakers in a position for the most success. And even though uh, Derek Carr is mid, I think Michael Thomas has some of the issues too, where Michael Thomas still does things really well in certain areas. Hitch routes, deep crossing patterns, Michael Thomas still does really well, and you've seen that on tape. Asking Michael Thomas to one-on-one -on -one down the sidelines when he doesn't have burner speed and he doesn't have the ability that he did four years ago is really giving you a low chance of success. No matter how you slice it, 
I think the play calling and design and the expectations being put on these players is not advantageous to their success. That's my opinion. I'm more than welcome to hear your opinion in the comment section down below. Oh gosh, that was a way more depressing episode than I wanted it to be, but I appreciate y'all watching and I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it. Whew, I just gotta hope it gets better. Appreciate y'all though, dude. I really do. Hit the like button while you're here. Who that? God bless. I love you. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next one. I'm out. Thank you.